Welcome everyone. In this video, I'll cover the Enhanced Details feature introduced in Lightroom Classic 8.2. This feature relies on capabilities of newer operating systems, so it's only supported for Mac OS 10.13 and later, that's High Sierra, Mojave, and any newer ones that are released, and for the October 2018 release of Windows 10, and any newer versions of that that are released. It's not supported for Windows 7. Enhanced Details is for RAW files only. So here are all the file types that are not supported. Non-RAW files, panoramas that you've stitched here in Lightroom with Photo Merge Panorama, and multiple exposures that you've merged using Photo Merge HDR. It also cannot be used on Smart Previews, some specific cameras and file types, and video files. It reprocesses your RAW file using a more sophisticated rendering or demosaicing algorithm than Lightroom otherwise uses to produce improvements in very fine pixel level detail. This new algorithm is derived from artificial intelligence machine learning techniques. Generally speaking, the benefit of enhanced details is marginal. In fact, to find examples for this video, I had to search through a lot of photos just to find two with improvement large enough to show you. That said, there will be situations where you may want to use it. Now, if you have RAW files from a Fuji camera with an X-Trans sensor, then you'll see more improvements, since with Lightroom's regular processing of these files, there's more room for improvement. Processing of RAW files from Nikons, Canons, and other manufacturers already is very good. Let's jump straight into how to use the feature, and I'll give more general information on it along the way. I'll start with my Canon RAW file. I've selected the image. I'll right-click in it and choose Enhanced Details. If it's grayed out, it's probably because you don't have the photo selected. We're given a preview here of a very small part of the image zoomed in to 4 to 1. Zoomed in so far that we see the individual squares of information, or pixels, in the photo. If you click and hold, you'll see the before. Let go, and you'll see the after. Before, after. I see very little improvement here. The color is more accurate or consistent for about four pixels in there. Now I'll zoom out by clicking down here, and I'll zoom specifically into the top left corner here where I've previously seen that it produces an improvement. I'll click and hold to see the before, and then I'll let go to see the after. So with the before, we have much more stair-stepping along edges. With enhanced details, the edges are smoother. Now if you look over here, as I do before and then after, you'll see fewer artifacts outside of the edges with enhanced details. Now, in addition to smoother edges, reduced artifacts, and more accurate color, if you have an image that has more A, you may see a reduction of that. Lightroom gives me an estimate here of how long it will take to process this image. Now, this is an old 8 megapixel image. It's a very small file. Yours are likely to take much longer. I'll click on Enhance. We see it processing up here in the status bar. I'll pause this video while it finishes. Now that it's done, I have my original RAW file and then the Enhanced Detail DNG RAW file. So the Enhanced Detail process does not overwrite your original. It's given the same file name as the original with dash enhanced.dng. So if you wanted to search for all your enhanced detail files, you could do a text search with dash enhanced. The new file is saved to the same folder as the original. Notice that my original has editing. That's what this plus minus badge indicates. Editing work, as well as any other work and the metadata, are carried over to the enhanced detail file automatically. Now, rather than spending a lot of time in the preview window trying to understand if and where I might get an improvement from enhanced detail, 
I often go ahead and process it and then look at it afterwards here in the library module in compare view. I'll hold the shift key down and click to select both the images here and then I'll click on compare view. The shortcut C. Now I'll click up here where I know there was an improvement. I'm zoomed into 4 to 1. We can in fact see the difference side by side. Make sure that you've got the padlock locked. That way when you zoom out or zoom in you'll be affecting both of the files. Now there's an obvious improvement in this area when zoomed into 4 to 1 as the preview window showed us. But if I zoom out to 1 to 1 it becomes much more difficult to see the difference here. I can see that for this blue sky showing in the middle of these yellow leaves that the edge here is rather soft and over here is crisper. But I'm staring at that area. If instead I was presented with this image it's less likely that I would appreciate the gain in quality. I definitely wouldn't see it on images sized for sharing on the web. On the other hand, if I were making a large print or including a large version in a photo book designed here in the book module in Lightroom or elsewhere, I'd probably decide to run enhanced details just to be sure that I'm printing with the highest quality image that I can. Note that there may or may not be improvement in your image with enhanced details, but it won't make it worse or at least I haven't seen an example of where it does. If you want to process more than one RAW file, you can select as many as you'd like and then right click in any of them and choose Enhanced Details. With multiple files selected, you won't get a preview window. It will just automatically start processing them and you'll see that in the status bar. I'll just select this one Fuji image though. First I'll go to Loop View. If you're working with an image and you come across an area in that that you wonder if it can be improved with enhanced details, then before you go into enhanced details, here in loop view, zoom in to that area. I'll zoom in on these stoplights. That way, when I right click and choose enhanced details, that's the area that comes up automatically in the preview window. I'll click and hold to show before and then after. So I see that the color rendering of the stoplights is more accurate. The building here is now more red than the original and there are various other differences here as well. So again this is a file from an, a Fuji X Trans sensor where you're more likely to see improvements. Now there is a bug right now with Fuji files. I don't know if it will be present when you receive Classic 8.2 but in the enhanced version it is showing this color fringing, chromatic aberration. In fact in the develop module I already removed chromatic aberration in the lens corrections panel and if I click and hold you'll see that in the original file it's therefore not present but for some reason it's coming back in the enhanced preview here. It's only an issue in the preview though not in the final file. Now before I move on for those of you who are curious, let me briefly explain demosaicing and why inaccuracies occur in the first place. In our final image that we're enjoying here in Lightroom, each pixel has a red, green, and blue color value. You may have seen these in the develop module under the histogram. These values determine the color and brightness of that pixel, as all colors can be derived from the mixture of red, green, and blue. However, Oddly enough, our camera sensors only capture one color per pixel, red, green, or blue. Lightroom and other raw processors therefore have to guess what the other two color channel values and the final color and brightness of each pixel are supposed to be. Lightroom does this by interpolating or estimating this from the surrounding pixels. This process of assigning final color values is called demosaicing. The enhanced details method of doing this is a more sophisticated and more accurate algorithm. But it'll never be perfect. If you zoom in far enough, you'll always see stray artifacts. Notice that the estimate on this one is 40 seconds. It's a 24 megapixel file, not 8 like the first one. I'll click on enhanced. 
I'll pause this video while it finishes. I'll click to zoom out and I'll go back to grid view. So here are two files. Now I've shown you the benefits of enhanced detail in these two files. Let's talk about the costs. The first one you've already seen. It's the time to process the files. The second one is hard drive storage space. Not only do you have another file, but this file, from what I have seen, is somewhere between two and five times the size of the original RAW file. I'll right click in this one and choose Show in Finder or on Windows, Show in Explorer. The original Fuji RAW file is 26 megabytes. The enhanced version is 72, so more than two and a half times larger. The fall foliage image, which was only an 8 megapixel image, is 12.7 megabytes, and the enhanced version is 46, so more than three times the size of the original RAW file. One reason for the larger size is that the original RAW data is included in the file along with the demosaiced data. If a new and better version of Enhanced Details comes out someday, this allows us to run the new algorithm on the enhanced file rather than having to go back to the original RAW file. That said, I don't plan to discard any original RAW files. Now before I get to actually weighing the costs and benefits to decide whether to run Enhanced Details, let me cover where you're more likely to see improvements. I've told you that I had to search through a lot of photos to come up with a couple of examples for you. I've also mentioned that there's a higher chance that your Fuji files will benefit. Across the board, here are some image characteristics that are more likely to show improvement. First, images with blue against yellow or blue against orange or red. It was this tip that led me to this image and then specifically the blue against yellow area up here. I didn't see those same improvements down here where we didn't have blue against yellow. Let's take a look at a couple more examples of this phenomenon. These examples come from Zhao van de Lagmut. I'm sure I'm butchering his name, so my apologies. This is a screenshot. So enhanced details in this case is on the left and then the original RAW file on the right. Notice these artifacts in here. So Lightroom didn't do a good job of assigning correct colors. Enhanced Details does a much better job. Now these colors present particular opportunities because our sensor captures significantly less blue and red, which also means blue and yellow and blue and orange, than it does green. So there's more interpolation or guessing going on with these colors. Enhanced Details does a better job at that. Let's go to another example. Blue against orange. This also is zoomed in to 4 to 1. Enhanced in this case is on the right. On this diagonal line, notice this stair stepping. It's much smoother with Enhanced Details. Because it's smoother, we also have less of a white halo. We have a smoother transition from blue to orange. So those colors in particular, but anywhere where you have strong contrasting colors up against each other, that is a potential area for improvement. Also, where you have diagonal lines. These could be branches, the details of dog fur, eyelashes in a close-up portrait, or fine textures or patterns. So you'll see less stair-stepping. Next, man-made thin lines. Small text on small signs, for example. All of the improvement we're talking about is at the pixel level. We're talking about small pixel-sized elements in your images. Small colorful details are another area. Now smaller images, such as this, can benefit more than larger images. Similarly, small crops from a larger file. Enhanced details, therefore, can be a way to get more out of your old smaller files than you were able to before. Speaking of older files, also look for improvement in older images shot with cameras that don't have low-pass filters on the sensor. You can potentially get more out of these files as well. Now even with these tips of what to look for, you'll find many more images that don't show notable improvements than images that do. 
So when should you bother with enhanced details? I think there'll be two major camps on this. Some of you will want to have the utmost in quality in your RAW files, and you may use enhanced details without bothering to do zoomed in comparisons of before and after, just so that you know you have the best that you can have. Given the file sizes and the processing time though, I would suggest holding off on building those until you've culled down to your favorites that you plan to actually create output with. Some of you on the other end of the spectrum will see the cost is higher than the benefits and you won't use this. I fall somewhere in the middle. I'm not going to run all of my images through it, but if I'm going to make a good size print or include an image in a photo book at considerable size, maybe full page, then I'll run enhanced details and use that file when I go to the print or the book module. And my thought is basically why not? I'll make sure that I'm printing with the highest quality image I can. Keep in mind that after you create your output with the enhanced detail file, that an option is to delete it so that it's not taking up hard drive space. You could always rerun the process on the original RAW file. So in the end, there's no one right answer to this. This concludes my lesson on enhanced details.